For our model today, we're going to do a side part haircut. We're going to leave the top quite a bit longer. On the uh, side here, we're going to do what I call a, uh, a visual blend, but not a technical blend. So we're going, to, we're going to cut the top, we're going to layer the top in a little bit, and we're going to shave the sides, but we're not going to have a, um, a, com a complete blend. So if you look at it here, how it's heavier, and then it's shaved underneath, but when we comb it back, it looks like it all blends together. That's, that's, what we're going, that's what we're going for. So we have enough hair on top to part to the side and brush it straight back. But we get this wave that comes in as it grows in. So we're gonna have to layer it in a little bit and probably do a little bit of razor cutting on the top, some razor sculpting to get rid of the wave. And then um, as we spin him around here, you'll see he's got a nice thick hairline. So we're gonna give him a nice taper back there. We're going to leave it a low natural hairline. We're not going to go off the natural hairline and, and scoop it way up. And then as I spin them around to the other side, you can see he has a, a pretty distinct part here. So we're going to do a disconnected haircut. We're going to shave right up to the part and then we're going to cut a nice, uh, we're going to trim it in with the uh, outliner and then we're going to touch it up with the straight razor. So we're going to have a nice uh, shaved in part there. And then at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to give a light, a light trim on the beard and then we're going to touch it up, uh, outline it with the uh, outliner and then the uh, razor when we're finished. So to start out, what I want to do is I want to just dampen the top down. I don't want it dripping wet because then I can't tell what the hair is going to do when I cut it. So I like to start on the top of the haircut and work down. That way I don't, I don't create this massive line around the hair or this bowl cut that I have to blend out. So I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to over direct the hair back because I want to leave it longer towards the front. So all it's over direct means is a fancy term for just pulling the hair back farther instead, instead of pulling it straight up in the front and cutting it here, pulling it back a little bit farther. So that's how we create uh, a longer front. And then I'm going to work my way back, taking very small sections. I'm using a traveling guide. I can see my guide underneath. And I want to keep my fingers parallel to the floor. That way we make sure we keep the hair even across the top. And then we're going to want it square on the side so we have enough weight in the corner to lay down. So when I'm doing this, I never, want to, I never want to drop the hair. You can see I'm still holding the hair. And now I'm going to spin the client around and just show you in the back what I want to do. So his pivot is right here. So I don't want to cut, I don't want to keep bringing it back and cut it too close. And that hair is going to stick up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to comb it. I'm going to take the front teeth of the comb, comb it across and rest my thumb right there to hold the hair in place and my traveling guide becomes a stationary guide. I pull that hair straight up to where I was before and there's not that much there to cut. And then I'm going to work that all the way around to the pivot area. So one thing to keep in mind is just because somebody's getting a haircut doesn't mean you have to take a lot, a lot of hair off or cut every hair on their head. So I just follow my guides and whatever they tell me to cut, that's what I cut. Now once I get to this point where I'm really close to the pivot, I'm going to do the same thing. This traveling guide becomes stationary and I pull the hair to that because I want to make sure I have enough hair to go over. If I keep pulling it over, shorter and shorter and shorter, this, this hair here is going to get come over and it's going to get so short it's going to stick straight up and straight up and straight out in the back and it's not going to lay down. And I'm going to take a straight razor and I'm going to cut in the direction that the hair grows. So I'm going to lock it in with the comb. So you can call this uh, razor sculpting or razor over comb. So very lightly, we're scraping across the top. And what this does is this is going to take some of the thickness out and it's going to help the hair to stay back, especially thick hair like this. 
it's going to stay back as we comb it back. And what I like to do is I like to do it in both directions. But when I do it, I want to stay away from the I want to stay away from the part. Because if we get too close to the part, you bend your head down. If we get too close to the part, the hair is going to stand up. So this way we leave it long. So it's the underneath layer that pushes the hair forward and gives people a pro with thick hair a problem with the hair staying back. So by doing it this way, we're actually taking hair off just the underneath layer. So when we comb it back, and I'll show you in a minute here, it'll just stay right back. So now when we comb it back, it just stays right back like that. And I want to stay away from this area. I don't want to go up that high. We're going to use our blending blade to blend that out as well as start our taper. So you can see in the corner here how the hair is growing to towards me. So I have to come against the grain so the hair feeds into the clipper. If I just go straight up, it's going to push the hair and it's not going to cut it. And we're going to leave a heavy spot there. Now in the corner here, the hair is growing sideways. It basically grows in a circle all the way around his head. So we have to come against the grain. Or we can come from the top and shave it straight down. Now if you notice, I'm angling the front of the comb away from the from this bang area or the front area. Because we don't want to cut that, we want that longer so that stays back. And I'm using the tip of the teeth because that will blend, does, does more blending than cutting to the top. And I'm also going to use this blade around the ear. And then we're going to start our taper and continue to blend as we work our way around. So I want to make sure to angle the comb out here. I don't want to go in too close and have that hair popping out in the back. So I'm just cutting across the comb with the tips of the teeth. And that's cutting and blending at the same time. And then we're also working on the taper as we work our way around. I want to give it a nice tight taper at the bottom. Now all this hair has to stay over, so the longer pieces I want to comb out of the way, and the shorter pieces we have to blend in. So I have to be really careful with the comb to just get those short pieces in the comb. And leave those long pieces so they'll stay down. Are you a member of HowToCutHair.tv? Learn the art of men's barbering from third generation master barber Greg Zorian in full HD, 24-7, from anywhere in the world. Sign up for your free membership and learn how to increase your efficiency and make more money behind the chair. HowToCutHair.tv So from the side, we're going to give it the corner, and from the bottom, we want to keep the clipper blade parallel to the floor. And then we're going to, when we line it off with the outliner, it's going to, it's going to complete that. So now what we actually did is we created part of the hairline in the corner there where we matched up his neck hair, or beard hair, with his hairline. And then the center, we're gonna taper it up. 
Then we're going to close the blade halfway in between. And then we're going to do it again and not go quite as high. Now on this side we have the opposite problem where the other side the hair was very thin. This side it's thicker and it's all growing towards me so I have to come against the grain with the lever in the all the way open position. Now we're going to close it halfway. And now we're going to close it all the way. All right, and now we have both corners. And we want to complete the taper around the outline. Now on the neck, we're going to shave up to about a half an inch to an inch below where we left off. We don't want to go too close because then we're going to cut a hole into our taper and have to raise the taper up too high. So same thing on the opposite side. We're going to lightly touch the neck with the clipper and get a nice straight line and we're going to shave to it. Okay, so when cutting the parts in, what I like to do is uh, cut it twice, once with the clipper blade facing down and once with the clipper blade facing up. That way, we get, that way we get it at two different angles and we get it nice and close before we use the straight edge. And what I do is I just touch the blade to the skin. I don't wiggle the blade at all. I let the clipper blade do the work. The blade operates at 5,500 strokes per minute. So let the blade do the cutting instead of wiggling it back and forth and trying to cut it yourself. Otherwise, we're going to get that line too wide. And I usually take it right back to the pivot area. And then I'm going to turn the clipper upside down. And we're going to do the same thing. I rest my hand on his head to steady the clipper. And just very gently, I don't press, just very gently touch. It's a sharp clipper. And we are going to go back with the razor to touch it up. And a nice clear shave gel or even a leave-in conditioner does the trick so you can you want to see what you're shaving. That way you don't have to if you're using a darker or white shaving cream that way you don't have to wipe the shaving cream off before you shave. Because this isn't necessarily an area that's used to being shaved all the time. Okay, and then on the side of the face, we want to line them up and we want to keep it square, just like the neckline. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. We're going to line off the other side of the mustache. Okay, we're going to give ourselves a straight line here as well. Match it up to the other side. This side's a little more difficult because it's growing straight this way where the other side was growing towards me. And then we'll sharpen up the line here. And then turn the clipper around and shave up.
what I like to do is I like to come just to the beard and just touch touch the beard with the razor so that way we get a nice a nice uh, crisp line So then we can switch from our free hand to our back hand stroke. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to stretch that skin out. And if uh, it's a little slippery, I just grab my towel and stretch the skin. I use the reverse freehand stroke and shave straight up to the beard. His hair's all growing straight up anyway, so this way we're not shaving against the grain. And these also grow in a few different directions, so we have to do the same thing. Comb the hair up and comb the hair down. And then we're just going to finish it up with the straight razor just to make sure they're nice and the shape nicely. Introducing Zorian of New York, premium grooming products for the modern man. Designed by third generation master barber, Greg Zorian. Made in the USA and not tested on animals, each of our styling products is infused with natural ingredients and features light, clean fragrances. Our two-in-one shampoo and conditioner is sulfate and paraben free and color safe. Do you own a barber shop or salon, rent a chair or run a school? Find out how we support our retailers with world-class barbering education and product knowledge training. We're currently accepting applications for wholesale accounts and invite you to apply on our website, Zorian of New York. For the style portion of the haircut, we're going to use a, our Zorian of New York gel with the aloe vera in it. It's 100% alcohol free. We've redampened the hair and we're going to put a, a drop of the gel in there and we're going to dry it. So we want to straighten that wave out a little bit and we want to give it a little bit more height. Uh, that's what the uh, client asked for. And then we're going to finish up with our Zorian of New York grooming cream, which has a medium hold and a medium shine. And it's going to allow him, if he wants to run his hands through it during the day, he can. It's not going to harden up like a hairspray or anything like that. So those are the two products we're going to use. Again, we're going to need the hair dryer and a vent brush after we put the gel in. So we're going to use a small amount, not too much. It's a very thick gel and it's very heavily concentrated. So it'll take quite a bit of time to dry if you put too much in. But again, the nice thing is it's, a, uh, it's alcohol free, so it's, a, it's also 100% flake free. So you'll see as we dry it, you won't see any, any flakes or anything. So we're just going to dry it all straight back. We want to give it a little bit of a lift. We want a, a, a nice powerful dryer with a nozzle on it so we can direct the heat and a good vent brush works well.
So as you notice when we were drying it by rolling the brush like that and getting the heat right down to the roots that supports the hair and holds it up and then from the temple area drying that up into the crown that also lifts the hair up so during the day if it falls down a little bit it'll fall right into place. So once we get the hair into the shape that we want then we're going to take our grooming cream We're going to take about that much, good amount. And you want to emulsify it in your hands really good before you uh, put it on so it looks almost clear. And we want to get it right down to the roots. So over the top and then down to the roots of the hair. And then to keep that lift that he wants, what I'm going to use is a, uh, a pick to style his hair. So we're going to take it and we're going to comb through where the part is to the side. And then we're going to lift it up in the front. And as I'm doing that, I have the product on my hand. So I'm getting more product on his hair. And in the back, we want to comb it to the side and push it down opposite the uh, disconnection. Okay, now we're going to spin them around and you can see how the beard blends right into the hair and the fade. And in this area here, as I said, when we're combing it, I have the product still on the opposite hand and pushing that down so that stays down and it all blends in. And we're right up to the disconnected area there. So for a quick review, we first used our Zorian of New York Firm Hold Styling Gel to dry the hair and get it up into place, get the shape that we wanted. And then we used an ample amount of our uh, Zorian of New York grooming cream so that'll hold it in place for the rest of the day.